It's two hectare property. It's 173 meters of beach and it goes to the national highway. For me, it was like uh, alarm, like, like, look at this tree. It could be a tree. <laughs> yeah. We bought it to, to hang on to it over time. We face west, we get sunset. In another year, it'll be four lane between here and Dunagetti. This is the province province. I want to say $200 a night, the whole house. So it's a much cheaper than going anywhere in Dunagetti. People will look at you like, oh. Yeah, we're, we're a rare <laughs> yeah. breed. It's designed for a big Philippine family to bring everybody. For me to tell you, oh, don't worry, it's all okay. It's just not true. We were literally going to do nothing. Uh, the, the owner's house literally fell down. Philippines is huge opportunity. Hello guys, today I'm with Steve. You may already watched our video about his uh, luxury mansion in Darwin. And uh, you, we got so many questions about his properties, about everything. So I have uh, opportunity to show you and be guest in his uh, country resort, yeah? Yeah. Uh, what's the name of resort? It's Storms Beach and Country Club. Our, our, our daughters are Storm and Sky. So the resort's named after Storm and the bar's named after Sky Sunset Grill. So we name everything after the kids. Oh, it's nice. So we are now uh, in Santa Catalina, right? Right. In provincial place, so it's near Baywan. It's totally different spot from Darwin, from Dumaguete. It's about maybe hour and a half, two hours of driving here. So it's quiet area and uh, we will show you this place around, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, this, this is, the, we call it a guest house. We rent it out for, I want to say $200 a night, the whole house. Uh, in a family, the whole idea is for the families to use it. And we'll go in the sun porch and look at it. But it's just, it's designed for a big Philippine family to bring everybody. Uh, the walls are folding glass so you can open it up like they are now and, and let the wind come through, let the breeze come through. Uh, downstairs are two air-conditioned rooms, with each with a bath. So here's first bedroom with double bunk bed, aircon, window and table. And what's here? Here is CR with shower, water heater, yeah, nice and clean. And second bedroom from another side of living room. Here is fridge and double bed, two windows, AC, yeah, more, more light here. And CR with shower, water heater, yeah, good. Upstairs is just a, a flat balcony. In that structure out there is a big bathroom with shower. It's a big bathroom, so you, you know a lot of people can share it. Oh. So what the parents do is they take the air-conditioned room and tell all the kids to go sleep upstairs. Oh. And we've got fans to keep the air moving, but it's all all these are screens. Mm -hmm. So it's designed for the air to flow through. So this back part, it's all fly screen. So you can actually, if you want, you can, if you're worried about mosquitoes, you just close the glass walls and the screen keeps them out. Yeah. And it's fresh air here. Yeah, it's beautiful. Because it's the middle of the day, like 2 p.m. now about. Well, we, we bought it because of the trees and we haven't touched a tree. Um, we, we fit this this house expansion into the existing footprint. We didn't want to remove anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and so up here overlooks the family play area. Two floors. I don't know how many two. Yeah, the table seats 12. We've got folding, you know, plastic tables and chairs by the hundreds. So we, we've seen this full. There's a kitchen beneath our feet and then there's an outdoor kitchen too for the overflow and a washing machine so you can we come down on weekends with the kids because they they really like it they can run around and, and just you know weekends especially there's other kids here so it's a sir it's it's just the normal circus yeah and here's so sick glass yeah it's the same glass as the other house like centimeter at least maybe more oh it's um 15 millimeter tempered glass 
this is a, a, a bar and restaurant and we get people that look, the weekends tend to be kind of busy because especially for family birthdays and stuff uh, kids are I think 30 or 40 pesos for the day and adults are 70 they bring their food and so we sell we sell beer and snacks and stuff on weekends uh, we've got pool tables we got a basketball court and if you wanted to come here we're open every day we've got beach cabanas that I think are I forget what they rent for 300 pesos a day or 400 mm -hmm. Uh, the pool cabana which has a private bath is 10 bucks 500 pesos a day hmm. um, so we're we're a local local friendly operation be, because we're not a tourist destination yeah right so if you want to live in a tourist destination th this isn't it but if you want to laid back sit on a nice beach and and meet some really nice people okay and so it's 173 on the beach, 170 on the highway, and then the 100 and whatever that is, 110 or something on the sides. It's 20,000 square meters exactly. We bought an existing place, uh -huh. which made the per you know, the, the titling much simpler because it was simple. It made the permitting and the uh, environmental compliance certificate simpler because it was an existing resort. So right now we've got all the required government paperwork to operate it. And it was made easier in part because it already had all that stuff but it had lapsed so we just had to uh, revitalize it to bring it back from the dead mm -hmm. which is easier yeah and by the way how did you register this place on a corporation or it's like private uh... yeah this is wholly a, it's a, a standalone sec registered company okay. uh with shareholders my wife's 57 percent i'm 40 and then there's three other shareholders the idea being that if somebody wanted it and it's for sale they can they can buy it and we would just transfer all the shares to them and the property and all the titles, excuse me, the property, the ECC, the mayor's permit, all the permissions follow the company mm -hmm. and it's a lower tax rate. Okay. And by the way, can a single foreigner buy this property? Is there any way? Um, no. The single foreigner can buy 40% of the shares. Mm -hmm. and then 60% of the other shares have to be owned by Filipino shareholders. So, yeah, it, it's going to take some, some discussion. If, if a single foreigner wanted to buy this, that's going to require some sitting down with a lawyer and figuring that out. But the simple answer is he, can, he or she can only own 40%. By the way, I already recorded an interview with a lawyer in Cebu who specialized on a corporation deals. Look, I think it's possible, but I'm not a lawyer. Yeah. So for me to tell you, oh, don't worry, it's all okay, it's just not true. I, I don't know that. Yeah, I think that's why uh, people loved our previous videos. It's got like 300, almost 400 <laughs> thousand views. It's uh, like most viewed video because you're so transparent it's in everything and just saying as it is. Yeah, so. look, we bought this. If you get back a distance and say, okay, foreigners in the Philippines. so. I saw somebody else's YouTube, and, and the numbers were interesting. In the total Philippines, about 1% of the people living here are foreigners, one way or another. In, in Dumaguete, 3.9% foreigners. <laughs> yeah, it's much higher. Dumaguete is kind of a, a destination spot. Manila and Cebu are both very hot because they're popular destinations. Yeah. So we, my wife and I looked at this and talked about it and said, okay, let's, let's think about this. If you want to live in Dumaguete, that's pretty easy to figure out. You can go from the house we have for sale to anything, to, to a simple NEPA structure yeah. up on the mountain. Yeah, like for a couple of millions. Oh, for, for, yeah, for almost nothing. Yeah. You, you can live away from the city and, and it's, it's different. Or you can live in Manila or Cebu, which if you want restaurants and shopping and don't mind traffic, Okay, uh, and a lot of people do. Uh, that's just where they want to be. Yeah. This is the other end of the spectrum, right? So it, this is two hectares. It's 173 meter of beach. It's for sale for 65 million pesos. 65 million pesos will buy you a nice condominium in Cebu or, or Manila. Well, what, what like in BGC, uh, BGC area, yeah. It's a luxury area, but uh, it's a small area, like maybe a couple of kilometers around and uh, it's inside of Manila. So if you will want to go somewhere, you will anyway get in Manila and it's traffic, it's 
crowded and uh, it's not for everyone. If you have business there, it's nice, but it's totally different place for... Yeah, yes. th this is the opposite end of the spectrum, right? So there, if you want, if you've got tired of America, you sold your house, you want to do something very different, you can get a nice condo in the city and there's girls and restaurants and it's, it's nice, yes. it's, but it's different. Or you can go to Dumaguete where there's 3.9% foreigners, kind of, I'm not going to say fighting over the girls, but there's more, there's a lot of demand to meet nice girls yeah. in, in Dumaguete. This is the province province. This is, uh, we'll take a walk, but this is an owner's house and a resort that makes enough cash to cover costs. We don't have rooms yet. We've talked about it and just haven't done it. But we get walk-in uh, visitors for birthdays, whatever. For 70 pesos, you can come, use the pool, use the beach, play pool, eat at the bar, all that stuff. In a place where there aren't many foreigners, this is a different, yeah. completely different. It's not for everybody. Yeah. In Dumaguete, when you walk on the boulevard nowadays, you will be one of another many, like, uh, hundred foreigners. But here, people will look at you like, oh. Yeah, we're, we're a rare <laughs> yeah. breed. Yeah. We go to dinner in Bailon, you know, wife and all the people that work here, we come down and take them to dinner on the boulevard in Bailon, which is very nice. We get, a lot, you know, I, we, I get a lot of attention just because there's yeah. not too many guys. And the kids will do the, hey, Joe. Yeah. Hey, Joe. <laughs> yeah. They'll do the, hey, Joe thing. So, you know, if you want to meet a nice girl, this is not, this does not suck. Yeah. You know, right now we, we rent the house out to, to families or for weddings. The bride sets up makeup area and stuff there and has a beach wedding. Or if it's raining, they can use the bar or the event center. So we, we're actually kind of a low budget um, wedding place. Do you know how many guests you had like uh, at one time the most? The most was about 200. Okay. The most, and that was just for a daytime wedding. Yeah. I mean, if you're looking for a resort, it's gonna generate a lot of revenue and this isn't it. It, it's just not it. We're too far from everything. Yeah. Dumaguete and Darwin have Apu Island and diving, and it's close to restaurants and uh, the mall and that. This isn't that. You know, a, a room to go diving in Dumaguete is, what do you think, 2,000, 3,000? Mm, from. From, from 2,000. Bottom yeah. end, two or 3,000 up to like atmosphere, which is a lot more expensive, yeah. but very nice. We, if, if we built rooms here, I think we'd be renting them for 1500 1000 to 1500 because there's not many people. We're not a tourist destination. Yeah. We bought it to, to hang on to it o over time. And, it, and we have enough staff here and enough work going on that it pays the cost of, mm -hmm. it pay, the taxes are like 200 and something dollars a year. Uh, it, and it pays for itself. So for us, it's in a, it's in a holding pattern. Um, we would sell it because we've got another project in Dolan, which is the apartments uh, that we need cash for. So we would basically take the, if we sold this, we'd take it there and do an investment property. Okay. Well, Dolan real estate's now set on the beach, nine or 10,000 a square meter. This resort is three. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a big difference. It's a big difference. We just added this about six months ago for the pool tables. Mm -hmm. And it's also a bandstand. So all the, the electrical plugs up there are for a sound system. And we've had some, some bands which have actually been out of control. Uh, there's so little local entertainment. So what we'll have is a, we'll bring a band in and then so basically sell them beer. So you can come to watch the band free and we'll, and we'll sell you Red Horse. But because we're in the province and there's not much going on, I mean, there's not too many bars or anything, we get a huge crowd of, of oh. everybody. Oh God, the kids and the teenagers, and, and we sponsored the Miss Bailon Beauty, Con uh, the, the Santa Catalina, excuse me, beauty pageant, which is great. But this is the bandstand and the pool tables in the back. Mm -hmm. And this is another, uh, seat, just a seating area for smaller groups. So we, mm -hmm. we'll have people come in and have a party of 15 or 20 people that wanted to give a presentation. And that's what that's for. It keeps them out of the rain. We were literally going to do nothing. Uh, the, the owner's house literally fell down. Hmm. Um, the, the event center was in bad shape. These, we call them pool cabanas, 
uh, were single bedroom hotel room motel rooms yeah i see if you will put their nipa walls it will be one uh, one room uh, yeah for yeah I don't know, 15, 20,000 pesos, you can convert it back to a room. The electricity is still there. That that structure in the middle is a bathroom. Yeah. And we talked about doing it, but we, we're we just off the beaten path. Yeah, it just depends. Ask me next week, and she may want to do it again. Mm. <laughs> but they, they were rooms. And this is the pool. There's a slide, a kid's pool. And it looks like a hot tub, but it's not. It's it's just a, a, a small elevated pool for kids. Oh. And I'm, here is one more, yeah, for kids. One more for kids. The pool's actually fairly deep. But this is a small one. Um, in this area, sometimes people come, they really don't have the money to rent the, the pool cabana. So they'll bring their, we'll rent them tables and chairs, and they sit in this this area here and have a party. Mm -hmm. okay, so we're, we're sort of the budget alternative. So you can come have a nice birthday. The kids can run around like crazy people. They can swim in the pool, play on the beach. We've got showers everywhere so they can rinse off. Yeah. And, and have a good time for not much money. And bring, your own, they bring their own food. So it's a much cheaper than going anywhere in Dumaguete. And Steve, you know what I noticed firstly when I came here, it's so easy to, easy access. It's right on the road. You don't need to struggle driving on a bumpy, muddy road somewhere because it's always like that in the Philippines. Last 200, 500 meters or more, it's always bumpy, rocky, muddy. But here it's like on a road, on a highway. It's a national highway around island. Yeah, it's a, like the main uh, well, public road. And it's it's going to four lane now. The construction we drove through on the way here is it'll be in another. I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna guess a year. In another year, it'll be four lane between here and Dumaguete. They've made a lot of progress over the last two years. Yeah, and actually I was in this area before. Uh, I came here to visit Monkey Sanctuary. Maybe guys, you watched some of your videos, around thousand of you <laughs> watched this video. It was one of my first. Uh, and uh, I was in Bai one couple of times. I was in a, um, par adventure park here in Santa Catalina. So here is uh, there are sports uh, spots for foreigners, but uh, it's mostly for people who came uh, in Dumaguete for a couple of weeks. It's not for people who came on a week. Uh, it's like for expats who live here, who stay for long. Yeah, they explore island, and uh, th there are some attractions here. Well, on weekends, there's there's a group of people that drive motorcycles around the island, and they'll yeah. take the you know, Saturday and Sunday, and we'll we'll pick them up for coffee or beers or something in the afternoon because we face west, we get sunset. Oh yeah, which we don't get in Dumaguete. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, it's so. it's it's like at every sunset everywhere. And it's beautiful. Yeah, it's very beautiful. It, beautiful. This area on the side is the expansion, the area for expansion. The resort fits on about half the property. So this side would be where you put, well, we have a design for 12 hotel rooms and a pool, it's another small pool. And the other side's about the same area, but that's where the basketball court is. But there's plenty of room to add things. Um, you just have to start it and see see how it went. And we, we like I said, we did the plans, we started the permitting process, and then she bought the Darwin Beach lot. Hmm. Darwin's got for, foreigners and, and kids that want to work from home, and yeah. it's not 1500 for a night, it's 3000 plus. So anyway, we'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not a charity. This is the event center um, where they'll have uh, just events, you know, bring in tables, chairs, set it up for weddings. It's a stage with lights and people, you can set up if you wanted to, we can cater things, we can set up, we can organize the furniture and everything. We do a little bit of it. But again, it's, for us, weddings are a really nice event to have, mm -hmm. but we, you know, once a month maybe. So we, we don't get a lot of them because there's not many people over here. But it seems that you didn't try to promote this uh, place. You didn't, uh, probably you didn't do agreements with agencies. No, and not all at this. all. Not at all. So this place has potential. Have. It does. Look, we, 
we bought it because it was pretty. You know, the trees and the, yeah. you know, the kids like to come down for the weekend, the guest house. We'll bring the boat around and anchor it offshore. Uh, out there is the tuna, where all the tuna in the province come from, from Chaton down to Bayon. Mm. So we yeah. hope to catch a fish one day. Mm. The other building is a, was a conference room, so we repaired the building, but right now we're using it for storage. Which is something else we probably should do. There's, there's a lot of, there's a demand in Dumaguete for conferences where they do what Philippines calls trainings, where bringing everybody from the government agency or your school or whatever and have classes and stuff for a day and spend the night. And they need air conditioned space, projectors, this mm -hmm. and this. We just didn't do it. So right now it's just it's full of construction materials, cocoa lumber, and glass for another project. Mm -hmm. It's on the list to do. We just can't get to everything. But there, there's a demand for conferences. The Bioline government actually goes all the way to Darwin for, oh. for. They don't want to. There's just really not another option. This was the conference room. Now it's our warehouse, our construction warehouse. We'll see. We'll see what's in here. storage, tables and chairs, cocoa lumber from trees. We've been slowly weeding out the coconut trees, mm -hmm. especially along the beach. We took them all out because every now and then a coconut would fall. And if it hits a kid, we don't want that. So we took all the coconuts off the beach. Yeah, but it also can be a room, so house. Yeah, the, well, it could be a house. Yeah. It was, it was built to have a conference space for these the things we talked about. So you'd put it, you have know, the big standalone aircon units and put a couple one in each corner and then blackout curtains on the windows projector and then the government not the government anybody that wanted to have a, a, a gathering could come here and do it at the beach you know, feed everybody lunch down at the bar and have a nice place and if we had rooms there's always somebody that wants to stay yeah and uh, how big is this area like 80 I'd, meters maybe I used to know. I don't really know. Yeah, these bungalows we rent almost always for birthdays. Every now and then you'll get a bunch of friends that will come over and just hang out, drink beer, and enjoy the beach. But usually it's somebody's birthday party. Oh. And here is my uh, favorite area. It's just pretty. Yeah, it's a beach with a lot of shade from trees and so nice trees. On some of them, it's just perfect, perfect spots for tree houses. <laughs> I just <laughs> like tree houses, yeah. And uh, for me, it was like uh, alarm, like, like look at this tree. <laughs> it could be a tree house. Yeah. Well, it faces west, so we get a we actually get great sunset, which is why Sunset Grill. Oh my, yeah, it could be yes. really nice. Well, and we, that's something I miss in Darwin is faces sort of east, so, and not so much. But here we get a great sunset. And it's, this is it, it's quiet. There's no dogs barking, chickens outside your window, motorcycles in the heart of Cebu. Yeah. None of that. Yeah, and there is even no neighbors. I fly here on the beach, flew here on the beach, and I didn't see anyone. And if they are, it'll be somebody that can afford a highway to beach lot. So it's gonna yeah. be something with some size to it. Yeah. Yeah, there's clusters of houses down that way on the other side of this vacant lot. No, it's, I, I liked it. The tree, we bought, for me it was the trees. Yeah. And Judith wanted to, to start a resort. We'll do, we'll do the resort in Dallas. Yeah. You have so many opportunities to build and, and grow and. Yeah, this yeah. can be whatever you want it to be. It's how hard do you want to work? If you, if you want to buy the thing just hang out and let it pay for itself and don't ask too much of it. Okay. If you want to turn it into a business, you need to invest something. You need the rooms, get the conference room, finish air conditioning it, get it to where you can rent it out. There's opportunity here. But for us, we live an hour and 15 minutes away in Darwin. And we, and we did in cash, right? We can't fund everything we want to do. Philippines is huge opportunities. Yeah. We can't do it all. So this kind of got pushed down to like number three on the list. The, the, the guest house was mostly so we could use it. So that's it, yeah? This is it? Yeah.
thank you guys for watching and i hope you enjoyed our tour and uh, you might be interested in our previous video if you didn't watch uh, your mansion in a uh, darwin it's a luxury 220 million uh, house in the philippines it's like so rare uh, real estate uh, i don't know real estate gem yeah <laughs> it's, it's very different yeah and watch Alex, because I've been watching his channel. He does all kinds of neat stuff, including condos in Cebu. Yeah. So thank you, Steve, for inviting me. And see you in the next videos, guys. Bye-bye. Enjoyed bye. it. Thanks.